You're listening to TG1F, an F1 podcast with Kate and Nicole. We're your hosts. I'm Kate. And I'm Nicole. And this is our show, where we talk about all things Formula One. And a lot of things that are not Formula One, too. Because why the heck not? This is your formal invitation to a weekly hangout with your F1 BFFs, where we'll talk on-track action, off-track gossip, and throw on some hot pop culture topics. It doesn't matter if you're a seasoned F1 fan, a curious newbie, or literally just think the drivers are hot because they are. There's a little something in this podcast for everyone. Sweet. Last time, I don't know if your microphone was the right microphone. Is it the right microphone this time? Uh, it should be. Okay. Because I think last time it was just your computer audio because you sounded kind of far away. Yeah, it's the USB. Okay. I know. I noticed that as I was editing it last time and I said, I don't care enough to really do anything I about mean, it. It is, <laughs> it is what it is, you know. At that but point, I said, I am not the IT department and <laughs> I'm not a sound engineer, so I'm no. not going to worry about it. <laughs> no, that's certainly not our problem anymore. Once, once the episode has been recorded, you get what you get, you guys. It's not my business if I sound good or not at that point. <laughs> We've done 150 episodes and if you guys aren't happy with the sound quality at this point, I don't know how to help you. We've had <laughs> so many different microphones at this point, like we're Sorry. Just two girls. We're just two girls. We're just doing our best. What could you possibly expect from two young women who are just trying their best to get by? <sighs> We're just babies. I don't. I'm just a baby. I might be at turning what point? 31. Yeah. I was going to say, at what point do we stop being young women? <laughs> Never. When does, a young, when does a woman become a woman and not a young woman? Like, I always thought. I literally always think about this and like, this is why I think that I'm not ready to have children because what do you mean that I, I'm not a child? No, I, I was thinking the other day actually, cause my mom always asked for my Christmas list. And so I was writing down my Christmas list. Like every time I see something that I'm like, Oh, I would love that. Like I put it on like a little note because like my mom and Nick are always asking me for it. And I never yeah. have a Christmas list. So I was like, Oh, this year I'll be proactive and like, I'll make a Christmas list. And then I was like, when do I, like, when am I too old to be, like, sending my mom a Christmas list? Like, I'm 30, and, like, I'm still going to do it, obviously. Like, I'm going to do it until she tells me not to, but, like, I'm just, I mean, like, she's asking. Because I think about it, and I'm like, I don't think that, like, growing up, like, I don't think that my parents got, like, a full, like, Christmas gift, like, array no. from their parents. And I'm just like, but I... I do not f see a future in which, like, I will be accepting of my parents and not, like, giving I me everything I deserve on Christmas. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it, it doesn't have to be, like, a lot. But, like, they're, like I'm gonna, always going to send, like, I'm, like, I expect, like, you know, a couple, like, a, a nice thing or two. Like, I'm going yeah, to well, I'm going to want a few things in my stocking. I don't think I'm asking like, for too much, you know? Like, when does that end? Like, is I it think it ends when you have kids and then the grandkids become who they give their gifts to. Well, I guess I'm not having kids then. <laughs> well, I guess I'm let those little... kids then. <laughs> what, I'm going to let those little bitches take my Christmas list away from me? Like, no way. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I literally always think about this. I'm like, when am I, like, an adult? Because, like, I don't feel as though... Like, I feel like there will probably be an age that, like, realistically, like, that's what should happen. But, like, I don't feel like I will ever be accepting of, like, hitting that stage. No. You know what I mean? Like, I no. – if my parents are ever, like, don't send us your Christmas list this year, like – You're like, I'm like, signing you up for a home. I'm signing you up like, for a home. You guys are I'm going sorry. in the home immediately. <laughs> I'm becoming emancipated, apparently. Lose like, my number, I guess, then. What? Like, I'm – you've just disowned me. Like, you're not – like <laughs> – I like feel you like that would be like a bill. crazy, crazy, crazy moment. You know what I mean? Trust me. I get it. That's how I felt when my mom started telling me I, I needed to start paying for my own phone bill. Oh, see, I've done that since I got a phone. No. My but mom was like, Actually, okay. since I got my first job. I got a job and my dad said, you're c contributing to the household. <laughs> so you want to yap with your friends on and on and on and on. And we don't you want to be a, paying for all those little text messages. Yeah. You want to phone you me wanna, you yap with your friends. I ain't paying for it. And I said, <laughs> so I've been doing that on my own for a while, but like, I know my mom, I just, obviously I spent the weekend with my mom in Napa, but she was talking about how like her and my dad are going to retire next year. 
And she was like, all right, well, the, the fountain's about to turn off. So you guys are going to have to start doing who's going to take over the phone plan. Who's going to take over like all of the stuff that we do. And I was like, what do you mean? What Literally, do you like, mean? What do you mean? Like, what's the meaning of this? Like, actually, no, I didn't sign up for that. Like, you had me. I am a responsibility <laughs> that you actually can't just turn off. I'm a dependent forever. Hate to tell you this. <laughs> Hate to tell you, but I will always depend on you. So get that one straight. So, mom, if you're listening, get it through your head. Truly. You Don't unfortunately have to deal with me forever. I will actually be a young woman for the rest of my life. <laughs> So, surprise. Surprise. You'll be getting a Christmas list from me religiously every year. <laughs> so you keep sending it even though you don't get anything. You're like, maybe this like, is the year she brings it back. Maybe this is the one. And, like, Nick isn't even, like, a gift guy. Like, he does, like, get gifts. But, like, he prefers to be, like, an experience. Or, like, yes. for mm-hmm. Christmas last year, he put... Like, he gave me, like, I think uh, one or two, like, he, he, we always do stockings for sure. Yeah. Um, but like, and then he, I think he gave me like a night, like one gift. And then he's like, I put, you know, a thousand dollars in our like honeymoon fund. Mm. And I was like, that's nice, but I Perfect. would like something now. No, your love language is gift giving. You love to receive gifts, bitch. I love to give, I love to give a gift. And I love yeah. to receive a gift. You're really, you're also so good at giving gifts. I was literally just talking about this where I don't feel that I'm that good at giving gifts where I'm like, I feel like yeah, once in a while I can, oh, I can hit it out of the park every now and again, but I feel like I'm much more of a thoughtful person when it comes to like acts of service or yeah. like the smaller things. But like when it comes to getting someone a gift, I panic and I'm like, what do they, what will they like? Yeah. I don't know this person at all. Yeah. <laughs> and so, but you, I was like telling you, I was like telling you, I was like, oh, Kate's really good at giving gifts. And I was talking about how you adopted this. You were looking at adopting the piece of the highway for me because I was joking about how as a child, I always wanted to adopt a highway. Um, I had and not no only idea. any highway. <laughs> I, I know, looking- I know. And I said, <laughs> I said she was looking to adopt a highway in Forks, Washington. The closest okay, guys, highway. this is... <laughs> So very serious, but it turns out you kind of have to pay to keep it clean. And we just, that's kind of, that's an expensive gift. We're not there yet. Maybe when two girls really takes off. And well, because we you also have it. to be a business. So I was adopting it. I was trying to adopt it through, it was going to be the two girls on Formula Highway, like by Nicole. And, but life is like, a highway and we want to ride it all night long. Life is a highway. But it was, like, so funny. But it was going to be, like, so expensive. And I said, I just, I simply can't pay for this Christmas gift for Nicole for the next five years monthly. <laughs> but you know what? It was a thought that counted. Yeah. And I still really appreciate where you ended up, which was a do- buying a star for me in the constellation Cassiopeia, which I want to get a tattoo of because it's in the shape of my freckles. So, you know what? Like, that's just, like, so, that is such a beautiful gift. And I am always, like, I feel like I can never compare. It's just one of the, not to brag, I don't feel like I'm lacking in a lot of areas of my life. Like, I feel like I'm an incredible kind of human being, um, <laughs> jack of all trades. But it really, I really fall short when it comes to gift giving. <laughs> not to chew my own horn, but I am virtually perfect. I, exactly. Like, this is why it's so upsetting to me that, like, I feel like I can't perfect my craft in in being a good gift giver. No, like giving gifts actually feels like a form of heroin to me. Like when I, when (laughs) I. To see people open their gifts. When I find or like think of the perfect gift for someone, like I get such a rush out of it. I am like, oh my God, I'm euphoric. Like, and then to like give the gift to the person game over like I'm like I need like I I need another hit of that so I just love to give gifts like it like feels I just love to see I love to like I love for people in my life to know how deeply like I feel as though I know them and yeah. that like I care about them and like I listen to the little things they say and like the little things that they do not even that they've said things but like the things that they do the things that they care about and like to be able to give them something that like enriches their life. Like I, and I love like a moment, you know, I love a yeah. moment. Um, yeah. 
But a lot of times I do hear people say that they feel as though like the gift giving and acts of service are the same. Like people are like, oh, that's basically the same thing. Like you just like to like, you know, give people things. And I'm like, no, it's very different no. because like, you are acts of service all the way. Like you, I know that like when I go to your house, like you are going to have like cleaned and you're going to have like my favorite snacks there and like you're going to cook me a meal that I love and like you're going to set out a towel for me and like it's just like you do these little things that are just like caring of like every minute of the day like you're yeah. forward thinking in the way that like you know what's going to make people's lives easier yeah every single like moment that they're you know living which I think is so special and then like I think the the gift giving on is like kind of like it's because they're similar ideologies, right? Like giving yeah, people it, things it that like it shows that you care. And I think right. that the difference is that like acts of service is very ongoing. It's like a daily thing. Um, whereas the gift giving, I feel like is kind of all of that, like in one thing, yeah. like, you know, I, I don't know. I think they're very similar, which I think is why you and I work. Um, yeah. But like for me, I don't like I would say gift giving as a love language, like in receiving gifts is very low on the totem pole for me because mm -hmm. like I generally am just like sometimes I'm like, I don't need more things. I don't I don't yeah. care about the things. Right. Right. But like I do really appreciate like a thoughtful gift where I'm like, oh, you know me deeply and like, you know, yeah. that this is something that I'm really going to enjoy. And so for me, it's hard because because I don't necessarily care too much about receiving gifts. It's it's harder for me to like give them because I'm like, yeah. well, is this just going to be junk for someone? And they're like, right. not actually going to really care about it. Like, right. For me, it's acts of service and where I'm like, oh, I know Kate's having a tough day or whatever and like I know that her she's been talking about how she's been craving cream soda like let me pick her up a cream soda on the way home because yeah. like I know that that's something that's like gonna make her day right right where it's exactly. like exactly for me I feel like acts of service is very minuscule gift giving like very yes, very exactly exactly moments yeah. yeah like acts of service is the day-to-day -day gift giving Yes. Whereas gift giving is like a larger, like kind of more cumulative. Usually it's like a bigger thing that's, you know, being given, but there are very similar like ideologies behind it, um, which I think is great. And I don't know, I'm like thinking of all the different love languages. I think of like which one, because you're like, I think you think gift giving is the one that you struggle with. I'm like, do, which one is the one that I struggle with? I would say physical touch seems low for you. Yeah. I'm not a very like. Touch Which is hard because it's Nick's number one. Mm -hmm, 100%. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nick is like, like, yeah, that's like, yeah, 100%. Physical touch is not like, I love a hug, mm -hmm. but like not all the time. Yeah. I'm a little overstimmied. Yeah. With too much physical touch. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm just kind of like, I don't like get away from me. From You're like, get away from me. Unless like I, I initiate, do, get away yes. from me. Like, if I'm in the mood, love to cuddle. Lo like, I like to sleep kind of, like, starting cuddle. But, like, after a little bit, I'm like, I can't touch you anymore. <laughs> like, I need my own space. So, yeah, I think physical touch probably is the is the lowest. Tough. Tough for Tough. the two of us. <laughs> We're working around it, though, you know? <laughs> and you know what? That's, that's the whole thing, though, with love languages is that – in order to be successful, it may not have to be yours, but for you to understand what your partner wants yeah, and like how they feel most loved and like you just make a, a conscious effort to try and be better yeah. at that, to show yeah. them that you love them. Yes. Which is actually funny because I do think that like, because I think you can have two love languages that are like, oh. it's the one you like to receive, but the one, and then the one you like to like give, like I mm -hmm. show my love, I feel like in a different way than I necessarily like to receive love. Like, cause I do think that like, I show my love in gift giving and probably words of affirmation. Like I yeah. feel like I, I'm a big words guy. Yeah. Um, that's how I give it. How I enjoy receiving it though is acts of service. Yeah. Like, yeah. And I, I feel like I do do acts of service a lot, but, like, not as consistently. Like, it's not kind of, like, it's not, like, kind of how I go to be, like, 
yeah. I don't know, like to show it specifically. Yeah. Um, but I do love an act of service, like to yeah. receive it, which I think is funny. I am number one. I love to acts of service to give, but also to receive. Like m- my life is very busy. I'm always thinking about a million things, which is why I'm good at acts of service because I'm always thinking about everyone else. Mm-hmm. But but I'm just like, can you also? <clears throat> think about me in that way and yes. anticipate things that are going to make my day a little bit easier. But also I'm a huge physical touch receiver. Like I love, but it's not necessarily like, I don't feel like I'm overly physical when it comes to giving love, but I like to yes. receive it in a physical mm-hmm. way, you know? Yeah, totally. Really quick. Do you want to check your Wi-Fi because you keep freezing a little bit? It might also be because my computer was dead. And yeah. so it's like buffering a little bit, like, yeah, because I haven't opened my computer since Wednesday. Yeah. So it's like, there's, it seems a little up. better. It seems okay. a little better right now. So maybe opening the door really was the, the okay. issue, but all right. Um, it's anyway. catching up. It's buffering just like me. <laughs> Speaking of, we're all opening the computer. How was your weekend in Nashville? It was really fun. It was really fun. Um, too short. I don't know. Trips like that always feel really short, especially I worked on Friday. So we Um, got there Thursday. I worked Friday. Game was Saturday. And we left. Our flight was at like, we boarded at like 6 a.m. on Sunday. So like, it was like, it was really short. So we took a Allegiant. Um, Have you ever flown Allegiant before? No, I have not. But I've heard of it. It's honestly fine. But it does a lot of these like back and forth flights. So like from providence there's one flight to nashville every week and one flight home from nashville every week so like Mm. or like two probably i guess it's thursdays and sundays are like the days you can travel in between and so like each like thursday there's a flight there and a flight back and then sundays there's a flight there and a flight back so we we had to get like the thursday middle of the day flight to nashville and then the early flight on sunday and it's just like so cheap and like no frills but it's like two hours so like who cares but it was really fun it was great weather um hot but nice the game did not go as I, planned i so know <laughs> we had fun until we didn't but like i don't know i don't know i was there and granted i did not go to alabama so like i don't have as like deep personal ties to like want them to win that bad like obviously like i was rooting for them but like Vanderbilt just played a really good game and like no one was expecting it like no one was expecting it and to see kind of like the fans in this stadium like as this was happening they're all like what's going on what like is happening yeah and there was this little boy like probably like seven or eight like two rows in front of me with his dad and you could tell it's probably like his first game and he had a Vanderbilt hat on and his dad was so excited and there were these like kid the guys probably probably our age maybe like a little younger um that were next to his dad that were like so excited they kept like high-fiving this little boy and like I was just like if I can't be happy and like we can't be happy like at least I can take solace in the fact that like I can be happy for this little kid because like how exciting for him to like be there because like you know who knows if that's ever gonna happen again because it was like so unlikely um but it was like he was so excited and so like that was really cute and then like I don't know it just like felt like it meant a lot to the Vandy fans and like they all like rushed the field afterwards and like well I saw the videos of them literally stole the the goalposts and they were watching it come down river which is a crazy thing to do when you win I don't really legitimately insane so when I tell you that like the entire field was like covered with people like it was crazy and we were it was like the well I'll say this the stadium is not that great and it is not very efficient for everything so we were literally standing in our seat still for like probably 30 minutes just Mm -hmm. trying to exit the stadium after but so we're staying there the whole time it's flooding like the whole field is covered you can't see the field and then but they're just like jumping on the goalpost and like trying to get down it took them like 20 minutes to get down nick was like i honestly feel like i want to go help them because like <laughs> why is this taking so long and so they eventually like got it down which was like everyone was excited like even all the alabama fans in the stands were like when it finally came down everyone was like nice like good job like woo, like cheering it was really funny but then when we were leaving, we decided to just, like walk a couple blocks to get an Uber. And like as we're walking, we hear this noise and we're like, oh my God, what is that? And all of a sudden we just see this like 
mob of people walking down the street and they're carrying the goalposts. Like we literally just saw them like carrying it down towards Broadway. And it was like, honestly, like really cool to see. And we were all like, good for them. Like if they're going to be Alabama <laughs> yeah. at home, like at their home field, like got to go all out. And so like, yeah. at least we were like, at least they're like really making a thing out of it. And like, yeah. it kind of makes you feel better when you're like, okay, they really like appreciate this win like this is like a really cool moment for them and so like I'm happy for them like I was like I just like can't help but feel happy for them because like yeah they just seem so excited and like I was like I'm happy for them <laughs> but yeah so I'm surprised you didn't pull a Nate Bregazzi and go <laughs> into the Vanderbilt Stadium early and just stand there at the top and wave to everyone <laughs> trust me if I had a good pulled- weekend he had a good weekend. Vanderbilt won, and he was the season opener on SNL this weekend. I just like our man. Can you believe how our far man is gone? really like? You know, we know how to pick him. We know we how to pick a funny man. <laughs> and I'm so proud of him. I feel like that's my baby. I, I know. Feel like that's like, my baby. I'm, I'm so, so proud, proud of him, him, knowing that he he's doing like a Christmas special. He's like, I'm this like, is his second I time hosting me. SNL. Like he's got he's was hosting or he was uh, presenting some awards at the country music festival. He's truly just on the up and up. And like, I'm just, I could not be happy finally him. realizing him and how funny he is. We've only been preaching the good word of neighbor Godsey for what? Six years, five years, six years. I think. No, I think it's gotta be longer than that. 2017, I guess 2018, maybe. Yeah. 2018. So six years, yeah. almost seven. I think, yeah, I think it was, yeah. Yeah, since 2017, I'm pretty sure. Guys, don't ever we doubt went, us, okay? We Y'all need to be in. listening to us when we say that we like things, because we know we have good taste when we see we, it. And okay? we are early adopters. Ooh, always. The thing about is that we are early fucking adopters, okay? <laughs> we like things. We are the original hipsters. Like, we <laughs> like things that then become popular <laughs> all the time. And it might be five or six years from now. But we'll be have been there first. And the thing is, though, is that we're not hipster in the way that we're gatekeeping. We actually want everyone to like all of we the want same everyone things. To we're like literally it. banging on people's doors, asking them to like the things that we like. Begging. <laughs> Truly begging. <laughs> like, we, I don't know how many texts we sent to try to get our friends like F1 at the very beginning. Like, we're we're really in the know. We're actually really cool. So, like, well, it's we so have- funny that... Riley texted us the other day. I was know. Like, hey, have you guys ever read Spark of the Everflame? And we're like, bitch, do you not pay attention to us? Like, we have like, literally been talking about it for months Have you not listened now. to the podcast? <laughs> Whatever. No one does anymore. It's fine. Um, <laughs> we talk about so much shit on this podcast. I actually don't blame people for not being able to keep up. I'm kind of like, you need to, like, take notes. This is, like, a note-taking podcast at this point to keep up with the lore. We need like a wiki, a uh, a fandom wiki, a wiki fan yeah. account for us and all of the things that we're talking about on this podcast, so that you can keep up. You can be like on October seventh, twenty twenty four. Yeah, we discuss this, and then we can go back and we can look at it in six years. Yeah, like because Lord knows we'll still be talking. We gotta know. We got a lot of lore <laughs> going on. We have a lot of lore. And we should run a poll. Or not a poll, a question box, and say, what is your favorite piece of TG1F lore? We should do that. I have a feeling a lot of people are going to say, sorry to hear about Zahn. Sorry to hear about Zahn is going to be a big one. Blockgate is going to be a big one. My god, Heidi Blockgate, 100%. (laughs) We, yeah, we have some deep lore, and I, I love it. That was maybe the funniest thing of all time. But speaking of so sorry to hear about Zahn, I feel like I deserve a text from my dad. So sorry to hear about Liam. <laughs> okay. It's just so- in general. Just in general. So sorry to hear about Liam. Yeah, like, I think we I think we need to make a statement because both you and I are previous Liam girls. Like we were, we were addressed as we were, Liam girls. We have addressed this part. I'm pretty sure we put out multiple notes app apologies about being former Liam girls, but like it's it's to the point where like never mind i'm not gonna go there um but it's it's <laughs> i was just gonna say it kind of us admitting that we are former liam girls kind of negates the fact that we just said that we know good things when we see it you're so Maybe not right. everything but to be fair when liam was in one direction he was 
his nickname was Daddy Directionary. He was the responsible one. He was kind of keeping. How did this happen? Like, I feel like he's done a complete 180 and like, I don't recognize that man anymore. Like, that's not the man that I wanted to marry in 2012. No. Like, that's not the Liam that I fell in love with. Let's be clear. Who is that man? The aliens have taken him. They've probed him and they've put a clone in his place. I really think he might have been. He must have gotten a lobotomy or something. He had to have. Like, he what? Another one. <laughs> put it, it back. Was failed. It was a failed it lobotomy. <laughs> um, no, it's just it's it's so concerning to me because like we've known, we've been knowing that like he was on a downward spiral for a while. Yeah. But like Maya Henry <laughs> coming out to stir the pot. Um, it's that um. <laughs> Uh, arrested development scene fra- with what's her name, the mom, and she goes, good for her. Yeah, That's how I Maya feel Henry. about Maya Henry and her book. And she's just like, all right, well, I've got time today. Let me talk shit about Liam after he was so cringy at Niall's concert. It's just, it's so, it's so sad to see. And now everyone's like, we're never getting a One Direction reunion because of Liam. And I'm like, I'm- literally, we all thought it was going to be Zane. And now we know that it's Liam, even though Liam is the most desperate one for the reunion. Well, also, it was amazing to learn that Zane was the one who literally threw Liam against the wall. He deserved yeah. it. And you know what? I will speak on it. And that makes Post me sad the- because I'll miss you too much, Liam. Kill me. <laughs> Just put a bullet in my face. <laughs> I like put me, take me out back and put me Euthanize down. Euthanize me. Because I'm so sad. Like I Old like, Yeller style. Put me out. I just, I the world bring, that I thought I lived in bring me to does the not reflect factory. reality. I'm so upset about it, dude. Like, I actually feel like I don't, like, there's like, I <laughs> I don't know what to say. Like, I'm so sad. I mean, we, again, we've talked about this. He's been on a downward spiral for the past couple of years now. And sometimes, sometimes he surprises me. Sometimes he had, I catch a glimpse of that previous Liam, but it was also the fact that he admitted to like taking advantage of One Direction fans who were like Liam stands because they, he knew they would never like push back on him or like out him because they were just like so dedicated. And that's like, so fucking predatory and like it makes me so fucking upset because i'm just like this is a person that i dedicated a lot of time and energy towards in my youth too much too much not even arguably too much just like guaranteed too much time and energy i was actually talking to someone this weekend because they we were we were just all chatting and the question came up what is your dream concert Mm. like what is your dream concert to see live and you can have two answers one like a previous something that happened so it could be someone that is like dead like oh i would have loved to have seen like elvis presley in vegas or whatever Mm -hmm. and then one like current slash like future concert that you like still possibly could go see and i was like i have my answers so everyone's going around they're all giving like great answers whatever um and i was (laughs) like past concert one direction one direction and five one, sauce one direction um right before zane left like peak one direction so i got as much of their music as i could while zane was still there yeah. future concert the one direction reunion. direction reunion <laughs> sorry and my friend that was there goes so were you like really like into like were you really a fan of like one direction when like at like the time and i was like mm. <laughs> to put it mildly <laughs> You're like, like yeah, I was like a super casual fan. I was, like, yeah, no. I was like, I knew about them, but I didn't like follow their movements. Um, and she was like, I think I just like missed them. Like, I think like age wise or something. Like, I just like missed. And she's a couple years older. She's like, I think I just missed it, but like love them now and like love all their music. But like in like the height of their fame, like I just think I like missed it. And I was like, that's oh, really sad. Again. I feel so sad. Once for again. You. I clocked them on X Factor and yeah. I turned all of my friends on. I said, you guys, so we gotta we gotta be in lockstep with what's got, going on over here. Come on, ladies, now let's get information. On the other side of the pond, because I'm not joking around. This is gonna be the next big fucking thing. And guess Which what? Is so funny when you watch their X Factor <laughs> like performances like Nicole, that's really what you latched onto. Like she had a vision, <laughs> folks. She had a vision. 
I always, I always see the potential. I always see the vision. I can see the potential in people. And I watched their, you know what? This is a perfect testament to why we got into Formula One. Because I really got hooked on them because of the X Factor, like, diary videos that they would do. Yeah. Their little personality videos, yep. their their charisma together, their chemistry, Perfect. them having fun. I literally was like, they could be fucking garbage on stage, but they're cute and they're funny. And I am and for that, 17 years old I am and in. I am going to follow them till the ends of the earth because- and For that reason alone, I am in. I'm in. You can, sharks, whatever you want today. I will dedicate my entire life and all of my money to making sure that you find success. And guess what? Look at the, now. Look now. Look now. Look. You're welcome. Liam's You're welcome, walking a tightrope. Liam's walking a tightrope. So maybe we shouldn't <laughs> have given that much time and energy to making him a success because we actually signed his death certificate. <laughs> yeah, you better watch out. We're we made him, get, and we can destroy him. We're literally going to get like an e true Hollywood story about him, like so, so seriously. It's just sad because like what happened like just to circle back to the beginning of how we started here like what happened it just makes me like who does he is who is surrounding him right now like i'm just like he needs he needs some better like a better support system it feels as though he's just being like enabled and i'm like we need someone to like true honestly and truly take him offline like get we need something needs to be going on here because like i the support system does not feel like it's there um i'm begging on my knees sophia come back and get your man (laughs) come back and get your man sophia i know you have a baby with another man right now and like you're (laughs) so happy and i love you so much but like he needs you i just think like out of all of them to think who would be the most mentally unwell you would think that it would be louis with not to like compare traumas, but like that man has had like everyone in his life die. And then, I mean, he, like, trauma. and then he like left One Direction thinking that he was like the least liked member of One Direction. And he felt like, you know, he we saw all of that trauma where the management would cut off his mic. And like, it, it, you know, I just feel like he would be the most likely one to, to be in kind of a spiral. So I am so proud of Louis. Yes. For being the person that he is today. Because and you want to know why. Do you want to know Louis' saving grace? Do you want to know <laughs> why Louis' okay? Say it. Say it. Eleanor. <laughs> my girl. My girl. My queen. Like, I, it's because he always had Eleanor. When did he kind of go off the rails for a little bit? When he was dating that Danielle bitch. <laughs> and he got that other bitch pregnant. <laughs> and then... And then Eleanor comes back and what happens to Louie? He gets right back on the right track. They might not be together anymore, but I will say the reason that he's okay is he had, he had a good constant support system in her. And I don't think Liam's ever had that. No. Because he was so Liam preyed help. upon. He was preyed upon multiple hurt times. People, hurt people hurt people, you know? Yeah. And so it's- like, we can understand I it, but can't it's not fault him too much. But it's also but not it's also his fault. <laughs> yes. So we can. You, you, do you see the warring of inside you? There are two wolves. <laughs> one Liam Liam fan and one Liam hater. <laughs> it's like I'm a Liam apologist, but I'm also a Liam accuser. Yeah. And it's just, it's really hard to choose a wolf. But you know what? I think that that is just a signal of truly loving someone unconditionally is that you can call them out on their faults and still be like, I know that you can do better than this. Like I know about Danny all the time. Exactly. Like Danny, you say stupid shit and I'm going to call you out on it, but that doesn't mean that, but I love you, you know? So like, I, I want to continue loving you more. So just think about your actions a little bit and maybe let's redirect. So there's hope. Uh, there's hope for Liam as, as two Liam lovers. Hey, hey, we've seen this happen. All right. We've seen 
child stars because One Direction, they were child stars, all right? They were. Their prefrontal cortex is far from developed. They were children, baby children, and they were thrust into the spotlight. They are child stars. Can you imagine... Imagine us at our at our young age of thirty even being cast into that spotlight. We wouldn't be oh, able yeah, to handle it. We're just babies. We're, we're just babies. Like, so it's honestly it's good, Pete. Like that our podcast it doesn't pop off. Yeah, like yeah, call her dad. Like I don't we, know if our we're just babies. Our I don't know if you could, handle could that. not handle it. Um, but we've like Lindsay Lohan. We've seen things. All right, we've seen people fall, and you're like, wow, they're never. We are never going to financially recover from this. <laughs> and they financially recovered. Lindsay Lohan, a star again. She's mm-hmm. back. She's better than ever. Mm-hmm. I'm waiting on Amanda Bynes. I know. I'm praying on Amanda Bynes. Yeah. Like praying, not like praying. Like I'm not praying, praying on her. Yeah, we're like, praying. I'm saying prayers. <laughs> I'm not treating her like pray. I am saying a prayer. And I have, and I'm praying for Liam. He'll get there. I can. I hope one so. can only. I, I mean, I who? Zayn. Zayn. I know. We really thought Zayn was lost forever. We Look at him now. Zayn was gone, like gone, not nowhere to be found. And he's back, baby. He's touring. The day I and never thought I would why, see the day that Zayn Malik was touring. This is why Liam needs to get off the internet. Zayn. Yeah reconnected with nature he went homesteading he lived on this little farm he raised some chickens he advertised some harry potter games every now and again but you know what he stayed in his lane and yeah. he healed he healed from that trauma and he, he came back better than team. ever yeah and liam take a step back you need to heal you need back. to yeah. disconnect to connect okay I mean, unfortunately I have... for for liam he does not have the benefit like zane does of like putting out good music like at least Zayn went off on his own and like kind of put out some bangers and was like guess what I'm back and like I'm actually like like this is the music I wanted to make while in one direction and like it kind of slaps Liam on the other hand said I'm leaving one direction with arguably one of the best voices in the group um like natural talent like was always one of the strongest and this is what I'm gonna put out and it was just so bad here's the thing is that like you said liam arguably one of the better like one of the best voices strongest voices out of all of the boys he has the potential yes exactly to put out good music. so that's all i'm saying is that like, actually he this is it who's his team who's surrounding him who's in his corner because whoever's in his corner is not doing a good job you know what this is a perfect segue because before we obviously we took bereavement time last week yeah but before that i posted on the story that i'm back in my machine gun kelly era i'm back in my mg (laughs) i'm back in my mgk era and i said that i would speak on it on the pod and a lot of people i saw a lot of responses and they said i'm praying for you like i hope you heal from this Um, (laughs) this is the this is is the 30 year old version of buying your hair red they're like, Nicole, I need you to be well. What's going on in your life? And you know what? To those naysayers, I say, MGK is sober. He ha- is in his sober era right now. And he has actually never looked better. And he's never sounded better. And every video that I see of him, he is such a girl dad. I'm obsessed with him. Okay? He cares so deeply about his fans and especially like, I saw a video of him and this is what prompted me to post this on the story is that I saw a video of him and there was a younger girl in the audience. She probably was like 10, 12 and she was holding up a photo of an, another time she was at an MGK concert and he was like, Oh, I was, he's like, Oh my God, I remember you. Like I was playing at some sports stadium and in between like a game or something. And he's like, I felt like no one wanted me there. Like it was, I just kept focusing on you because you knew all the words to all of my songs and you were so happy that I was there. And so he like pulled her and her friends up on stage and it was just like these three little 12 year olds, like singing Machine Gun Kelly songs with him. And I was, and he was just like kneeling down next to them and like singing with them. And I was just like, I'm actually like so obsessed with you. Like, (laughs) I love you. (laughs) like he and so like this is why like 
I have faith that Liam, like Liam needs to, he needs to really reconsider his brand and his persona and like figure out what's good for him um, and get a better team around him to be yeah. like, we need you to start rethinking your public image and kind of healing from within and not, Agreed. he seeks external validation so hard. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's why he is the way that he is, is because he, he can't feel fulfillment from the inside. I mean, she's right, folks. <laughs> She's not, I, I couldn't have said it better myself. Like, this is actually now a podcast where we take celebrities and we just psychoanalyze them. We're just girls in therapy and we're bringing our therapy speak to the people. Um, speaking of, have you gotten a new therapist yet? No, I haven't. Nicole. I have not. Nicole. I was just thinking about it today. The problem is, is that I've got one on the waiting list for my old therapist. And so I was like hoping that that was going to be quicker, but it's not. And then after the clairvoyant therapist search, I ha I kind of fell off after that. Um, and I just like have a bunch saved that I've been meaning to reach out to, but I just haven't. So I well, need, I'm, I'm considering, I need to do like, I need to do, I was telling Brittany this when she was here, I was like, my type of therapy, like talk therapy isn't really working for me because I know why I am the way that I am. I know where all of my feelings come from. I rationalize every single feeling that I have and I'm like, okay, well, I know where it's coming from. I can stop feeling it. That's not helpful. Um, actually it's hurting me. So I don't know how to feel my feelings. So I need to do like somatic therapy. I need to do EMDR. I need to do not just talking to someone for an hour because I'm just like, yeah, you, I hear what you're saying to me and I already knew all of this. You're not yeah. changing the game for me. I need to actively like heal my relationship with my emotions. Yeah feel that well i am gonna be the person in your corner that liam <laughs> does not have right now and say let's get it going girlfriend let's get it going we will be discussing this when we're together and we will be sending I, some emails i think i i will say overall though like i feel like i'm doing i'm in a much better place than i was two months ago i totally agree with that not that it's, I'm saying like, I don't absolutely need one, but it's not, I'm not in crisis mode anymore. I was in crisis mode two months ago and yeah. now I'm very much like, okay, I'm kind of coming back to my normal state and like, I can find a therapist when I have some time. Yeah. Yep. Agreed. Similarly, to bring F1 into this a little bit. <laughs> I guess 45 minutes in and we've only maybe mentioned F1 mentioned once. It. It's an uh, off week, you guys. Who cares? We're just here to yap. Again, after they after they booted Danny and potentially are having the Hawk Tua girl wave the flag That's at Austin. what I was like, going to say. I said, you know who's in crisis mode? It's sort of the Americas right now. Like, I literally couldn't care less about Formula One right now. Like, they are like, grinding my fucking gears. And specifically... Circuit of the Americas. They're in crisis mode because who's going to be- You're in a crisis. You're I'm in a crisis on my, on my way. Like, who is going to be their poster cowboy? Like, who is it? What are they going to do? Like, who are they going to lean on for the content this year? And then also, like, the rumors that they're having the Hawk to a girl wave the checkered flag. Like, we're- This is- This is- This feels like um a cry for help. A cry uh, for we help. are we I did we did just actually get confirmation that it was it's just a rumor. Okay. About Hawk to us. So thank God. But thank God. But you know what? Now that it's been mentioned, I bet you they're gonna be like, actually, that's a really good fucking idea. Let's do it. We we Barbara Streisand it into effect into reality, and I'm fucking pissed about it. And you know what, guys? I we are regularly supporters of other women doing things that they love. Right. We're, you know, we're haters to our core, but we're also like supportive. But there's just something about the Hog to a podcast that I just, can't, the talk to a, I just can't get behind it. I just, it feels like society is crumbling. We make the wrong people famous. I, I just am like, I need us to be so for real. I just need us to be so for right. real. Right. I think the thing about it is that like, I'm all for a civilian becoming famous. A civilian. <laughs> Just a normal person <laughs> becoming famous for something on the internet. Like, but if it has merit. Yes. 
here's the thing. Like, the woman in the subway that's saying the lady got, what is it? I'm off the deep end. Like, yeah. the woman in the subway that just, like, was like, oh, what? And then crushed that song. And so I don't think like, I saw that, but okay. Yeah, from, like, four years ago. Okay. Uh, it was, like, during COVID. Um, but she crushed it. And, like, I'm like, that's a woman that, like, I'd be like, okay, if she went and got, like, a fucking record deal because someone just, like, found her on the street and was like, that lady's an amazing singer. I would be super, super psyched. Like, then there's, like, internet person, like, Brittany Broski literally got famous as being the kombucha girl. Similar to, like, Hawk to a girl. She was kombucha girl. But she's fucking funny. And, like, it's, like, that video was funny to the point of, like, it was content she was creating that was, like, enjoyable. And I'm like, okay, I can see where this is going. Like, I bet she's really funny. Hog to a girl Hawk literally to just... spit on that thing is the least funny thing that I have ever heard anyone say. And this is why you and I make content for the girls, the gays, and the days. That is straight male comedy. You, <laughs> that is for men who do not like women. I just, I'm like, this is not, this is, at no point was I ever like, this is the funniest meme I've ever seen in my entire life. I just feel like if she, it's it's like if someone says like a very funny joke on one of those things and they got famous, I'd be like, okay, fine. But like, that wasn't even like a, like, she wasn't like giving a joke. She was like answering a question. It was just like a response. So like, where did we, how did we get here? How did we get here? How did we get here? Like, I don't know. I don't know. Could be just me, but I just good for her for like good for her. I guess I, like Whatever. good for her to for seizing the moment. Carpe you guys know that we Carpe hate bar school. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. I just it's like I'm so jaded when it comes to Formula One. Now I just am like, <laughs> you guys are driving me nuts. Pun intended. The whole Danny situation. I'm just like, yeah, you guys. Oh, and then I saw an article and they're like, oh, Danny might be like coming back to Austin because the people are panicking. They're like, oh, people are sell like not buying tickets to Austin because they only wanted to go to see Danny Ricardo. At his similar, to how the, <laughs> similar to how the rumor was that Red Bull Liberty Media told Red Bull they couldn't fire Checo because they were worried about t- ticket sales in Mexico. I bet you they didn't fucking think about how it was going to impact the American crowds for Daniel Ricardo to be fired. And they're like, oh, Danny might be coming back in a master stroke. Like he's might be coming back to like do like personality appearances. And I'm like, he better fucking not. No, literally. He better not if come back was. as the court jester. I cannot stand to see him be paraded around like a fucking show pony again. If he, I can't if he does it. that, I will lose respect for him. Literally. Like, you, he needs a better team behind him if I'm like, you have to have respect for yourself. Like, yeah. have some self-respect. You That's a Mike Italiano uh, mm-hmm. suggestion if I've ever heard one. And he, we booted Mike Italiano. So let's not go back to that place, okay? Like, yeah, it'll be interesting. But yeah, yeah, I've heard like so many people are not going. No, we Austin. know almost no one who's going to Austin. Yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy. Because of the tracks, it's one of the best tracks to go to. Yeah. But I'm just not interested. I think F1's, F1 is girl bossing too close to the sun, if yeah. I'm being honest. They got a taste of success here in America. And they they're hawk tooling. Yep. They are <laughs> hawk tooling for sure. They're flying a little too close to the sun and they're going to get burned. a little too much on that thing. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you. That. Okay. They're just, it's. I'm not, I don't, I don't feel good about it. I'm going to tell you what. You know what else I don't feel good about? The hat Charles was wearing this weekend. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> How'd you know? <laughs> the big floppy hat. I just like, 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 please tell me that was Alex's and she was like, I, I it was so. a joke and it was, he was like, oh, I'm going to wear this as a joke. Like, you know how like Nick wears my sunglasses sometimes? Yes. And like, it's funny. I'm yeah. really hoping that was the situation because, like, Same. hello, hello, sir, sir, sir. We can't deal with we can't deal with bad hats and bad pants on you. Okay, you get one or the other. You can't have both. Yeah, truly. I just he needs a stylist. <laughs> <laughs> he talk about. Okay, he needs a better team in his. He needs a better team. Okay, <laughs> this. 
the episode is all about having a good team in your corner, having good people around you, because what's literally going on, what's going on, it's just, Help. it's flabbergasting. I'm flabbergasted, if I'm being honest. It's truly too much for me. You know what? As long as he's happy, I'm glad for him. I'm glad he's being you know what? He's, he's feeling moisturized. He's happy. He's in his lane. He's, you know. He, yeah, he's not causing break. problems. He's not like doing anything wrong, so we can. Uh, he's not leaving, so I can I can approve of a hat if that's the I worst like, time. I feel like content out of the the boys on this break has been minimal. I feel like everyone's really you been know quiet on the good. internet. Good, <laughs> good. Speaking of Liam needing to be offline for a little bit, <laughs> and the fact that F one is spinning too hard on that thing, these boys need to be offline. Take break. Log Take off a for break. a little bit. Take a break. We can go upstate. <laughs> I feel like I, I Lando posted a little bit of him playing golf with Carlos. Like they're all just like, here's a little thing that I'm doing, but like I'm protecting my peace, and I'm like, good for you. Good, good, good for you. Oh, you should. I feel like a mom. I'm like, feel like I'm like mothering these boys. I, it's turn. This is actually how I know that maybe I'm not a young woman anymore, is because I'm no longer like thirsting after these boys. Like I'm actually like. I feel like motherly instincts for them. Like I'm like, I need honey. Screen time is over. Like you need to eat. Go a vegetable. outside and play with your friends. Like eat your vegetables and finish your meal and go outside and play and like be in nature and like you can have your iPad tomorrow. Like I feel like so motherly now for them. It's you know what good for them. I feel like I haven't seen anything from Lewis. No, he's, I feel good. like he should be here in New York. Like, where is he? <laughs> I think he should be here. He should be here. It's Austin coming up. He's got a home in Tribeca. I'm sure he's like, like, d- he usually takes these like big longer breaks. And like, he, I feel like he's just been doing like different like Africa trips. Like, I feel like he's trying to go to mm-hmm. a lot of different like African countries. And so maybe he's doing that. Maybe. He likes to log off. And I'll say that about Lewis. He's mentally That's well because he likes to log off. He's an elder millennial, so yeah, he gets it. He gets it. He was around in a in a period before the internet, so he has a healthy relationship with the internet. And thank God for that. Just like you and me this weekend, we have said, "Don't call, don't text." Honestly, me on office lately. I know I've been so offline lately, and it's been so lovely. As an update on my reading adventures, remember that the last time we chatted? So I'm still going oh, to my yeah. Rena Kent books. Okay. And I've read so many, dude. <laughs> let me let me count. Let me count what number I'm at now. You are blowing through your reading goal this year. I've read 24. Wow. Of I think 38, and I'm on number 25 right now. I just am like so deep into this world now that I'm like, it's like I can't not you can't, yeah. read all of them, you know? Because yeah, of I'm just like I. It's like I'm coming into the TJ1F podcast after like four years late and I'm like there's so much lore that I'm like I have to know all of it like I feel like I feel like a woman possessed right now like well, thinking about these books like I said I post on the story I've been I got this book for vacation and I've been hmm. reading it and everyone was like oh did you like you know, the other books in that. the series and oh. I said it was in a series I had no idea so this is the third one so I gotta Whoa. go back and read the first two. Well, I think it's a series. Are they like series standalone one, series? But it's like the characters in the other two books got it, make got appearances. It. Like you you learn yeah. about these people. Um, like my books. Exactly. Uh, but I was like, mm, well, I'll be eating them up when I'm done with this one because it's so cute and it's so good. I love that. And I just love, I love a well-written book. 100%. Yeah, I need you to know. get back into those. <laughs> you're like yeah i'm reading books but like i wouldn't say that they're good <laughs> like let me put let's put it this way i read two of them yesterday like they're they're just what they are they you know they're just what they are um i'm strictly in it for the lore at this point like i'm in it because i actually am too deep to not <laughs> you can't um, it. yeah which I have been learning from another book that I'm reading is called The Sunk Cost Fallacy, which is... Um, what are you reading an econ book? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> no, I'm reading um, a book about cognitive biases um, mm. from my favorite author, Amanda Montel. So I'm reading her latest book, which is The Age of Magical Overthinking, mm. Notes on an Irrational 
mindset or something like that. No, it's on irrationality, modern irrationality or something like that. Um, and it's so good. It's just like a collection of essays. Um, mm. And she like dives into these different cognitive biases that we have um, and kind of relates it back to her own life, but also like culture and like all these different things that like we all experience. And so she kind of takes a look at like, how our brains work and especially in like the information age and how like our brains were legitimately never meant to process this much information all at once ever. And so our brain like created these shortcuts for us to like store information and understand information and process it. And those are all these different uh, cognitive biases that we have. So like the sunk cost fallacy is when you feel as though you've given so much time and effort into something that like, it would be a waste. It would be a to waste walk to walk away. And so she related that to like a bad relationship she was in. And she was like, I was in this relationship that like literally was never good. But mm-hmm. I kind of kept telling myself, like, well, I've been in it for so long, like, it has to get better. Like, and right. like kind of giving these achievements of like, okay, well, like, once we like move in together, it'll be better and that will solve yeah. our problems. Or like, once this happens, like, it'll be better and it'll solve all our problems. And like, it just never did. But it's like, it's like you know the reasoning why people stay in relationships longer than they should or the reason people stay at jobs longer than they jobs yeah like people like just like the all these different reasons it's it's also scary to find change right Right. our brains regularly keep us yeah from change because that's a fear of the unknown right to change is to go into something new and that's scary and so Mm -hmm. to be like well i've already dedicated six years of my life to this relationship like uh, okay well, I can't gee, waste I can't big. look back on those years as a and feel like I wasted them right? yeah so yeah. that's me with these books this book series right now I'm like I'm because I tie it back um, I'm, I've read 24 of them out of 38 like it would be a shame to stop now and yeah, like, you obviously well. like I'm enjoying them enough that I'm like <laughs> they're just kind of like insanely um entertaining that I'm like it's not like it's hurting me so yeah. I'm like, gonna keep doing it but it's that not is- like it's like pulling out eyelashes to read these right. books you're like okay yeah. well they're bad but whatever. I'm entertained at least like it's pretty <laughs> yeah. nice um but yeah the other one is also the book that I'm reading as my part of my like nighttime routine because I'm supposed to read like a book that's not like super engaging and exciting so that like mm. my brain will like want to go to bed and so like this is a non-fiction <laughs> book about cognitive biases like it's not like I'm like have to finish it tonight like I read like a chapter a night and yeah it's just such a well-written book and like I just love the way that she takes these like non-fiction like more like cultural or psychological or whatever subjects and makes them really interesting and like funny so yeah. if anyone is looking for like a nice book kind of non like story but just something like fun and interesting to read I highly recommend it it talks about like she talks about her like past relationship a lot and like so another chapter is called a relationship is just a cult of one and it's Mm. like that's really where she talks about the sunk cost cost fallacy Mm. and then she has another uh chapter called Taylor Swift are you my mother and (laughs) it's like all about like hero worship and like all Mm -hmm. like the different levels of hero worship um, and, like, where people where you, fall on that scale. Where do you think we are on the scale for F1? Honestly, I think we're getting better. <laughs> we were. We were. At the beginning, alarming. <laughs> um, now we're done here. Like, wh- I think it's, like, the top step is, like, I would commit an actual crime if, the, <laughs> like, a federal level crime if <laughs> this person asked me to. Without a second thought. And like, that's. I mean, like, five years ago, if Charles Leclerc was in our DMs being like, guys, I need you to wire money to me right now. For like, like an illegal thing, I'd be like, yeah, yeah I will. Say less. That. So like, we were bad and now we are not as bad. Um, and I think that's also growing up. And that's not um, called being an adult. We're becoming an adult. Yeah. Our pre- prefrontal cortex came online. We're and- not even young women. We're mature, regular women. Do you guys see how we started, where we started on this podcast, saying that we're babies, and now we're ending this podcast as women, as adults? We started as, I'm not a girl, maybe not not yet a woman, (laughs) but I am a woman who will still have a Christmas list. (laughs) And that's all that matters. (laughs) We can wrap it up there. And you can put a nice little bow on that, okay, and give it to me for Christmas. (laughs) 
<laughs> well, that has been another riveting episode of Two Girls, One Formula. Like, you want to know what? It's funny because we started this podcast, what, three years ago? Almost exactly, I think. Yeah. Like, really close to exactly three years ago. And when we started off, the episodes were really good because we were like, this is just a conversation between the two. Yeah. Like, this is just, like, our daily conversations because at that time, the only thing that we spoke about was Formula was One. Formula like, one. We, were, we were committing federal crimes <laughs> for Formula One at that point. Like, we, that was where we were at um, <laughs> in our fandom. And so, like, people, like started listening to this podcast like this is great I feel like I'm just like in a conversation with my friends um and I think since then it's kind of become a little more like formulaic and like Mm -hmm. could because we've like kind of grown out of talking about formula one all the time with each other Mm -hmm. so like to have these like hour-long conversations being like okay we We just want to yap (laughs) um so like let's make an agenda and like we'll make this more strategic uh, I guess but today was kind of fun because Hey guys, if you're wondering, this is literally what a conversation with Nicole sounds like. <laughs> and this is how our podcast started out, was us just hopping on the mic as if we were just having a, like a weekly catch-up call. Yeah. And that's what this was today. So if you guys were ever wondering what it feels like to be IRL friends with us, this, this. episode is it. <laughs> this is actually legitimately it. <laughs> This is how Nicole and I talk all the time, including the therapy speak, because actually, fun fact, Nicole and I used to call each other every single week after our respective therapy sessions. We would. And we would d- digest. We would have a digest. We would debrief. We would have, yeah, a debrief on our therapy session. We'd say, what did you learn this week? And what did you talk about? And what did your therapist say? Um, and it was, like, so fun and honestly very helpful. That's why you want me to get back into therapy so that yeah, we can- I miss it, dude. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't have to be every week. I go monthly now because I'm <laughs> hashtag cured. Um, <laughs> so true. <laughs> but yeah, it was like honestly really helpful. So if you guys are like in therapy and you have another friend that you trust with your life that's also in therapy, highly recommend a deep brief call because it really made what I learned stick in my head more. I agree. You know? I was like, okay, I'm actually like, it's like when you go to class and you like, write your notes but then mm-hmm. it's more helpful if you like talk them out or like you tell yeah. someone about what you learned um that's how I felt about our therapy I think it also kind of takes away kind of a stigma of shame around yeah. therapy is that a lot of people go into therapy and be like okay I have to talk about like my deepest darkest secrets to this person and like no one else can ever know what right. I talk about in right. therapy and I don't think that that's very healthy I think right. it's important to be like okay like I reflected on what I talked about today and I think that I can make this in and bring this into other aspects of my life and exactly talk about it with my friends exactly so so highly recommend anyways this is my most random episode <laughs> simply because this has just been a conversation so that was fun. until next week guys until next week we'll see you on the internet or maybe we won't if we're being offline <laughs> but who most knows likely, most likely i think most likely <laughs> you and i will be seeing each other this week irl IRL. And then next week is before Austin. So I feel like we'll have a lot of US shenanigans, a yeah. lot of content being created. So let's hope. Let's hope. Okay. Well, we're not going to put any pressure on ourselves, but no. we'll be doing what we do best and yeah. whatever that is on the day. <laughs> and until then, guys, we'll see you on the internet. We'll see you on the internet. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening to this episode of TG1F, an F1 podcast with Kate and Nicole. If you like what you heard, don't miss out on the fun between episodes. Keep up with the chaos on Instagram at two girls, one formula. That's spelled out T-W-O girls, numerical one formula. And check out our website, two girls, one formula.com to shop cute fan made F1 merch. See you next week. But like we said, in the meantime, we'll see you on the internet.